Okay. <clears throat> Enunciation Latin class, Capitula, Capitulum Octavum, Taberna Romana, and we will be doing the Grammatica Latina at the end. I didn't bother changing the slide here since the contents uh, don't change. But let's begin with our Oratio Initialis. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. And before we go, I thought I would uh, show you a little cartoon here. Sadly, it kind of got clipped there at the end. Fortitudinum non habeo. Any guess? I'm sorry, I was muted. All right. I have I have no courage. Courage, fortitude, yes. Cor non habeo. I have no heart. Cerebrum non habeo. How I feel some days. <laughs> I have no brain. I have no brain. Yes. So I'm anyway. safe from the zombies. <laughs> Poor linguam Latina non deshitis. Why don't you learn the the um, Latin language? Cesar Ovidius et um, uh, Cicero omnia vobis dabunt. So basically, they're saying learn Latin and read Caesar, Ovidius, and Cicero, and uh, they will give. Uh, all of that stuff to uh, to them. So, so you learn Latin and you get courage and a heart and a brain. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. All right. The Grammatica Latina. All right. Pronomia quis, qui, is, and ile. And these are kind of hard to keep straight in English because we don't really quite, we, we have ones like that, but we don't quite use them that way. Quis sacum portat? Who is carrying the sack, right? Servus sacum portat. Qui servus? Okay, what servants? Yeah, we, well, not what, but uh, we, who, which, which servant? Which yeah. Servant. yeah, yeah. See, this is uh, this is the uh, um, the interrogative pronoun, so it's kind of um, let's call that fill in the blank. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, we might hit the litany of Saint Joseph later. Uh, so they're answering. Quis sacum portat, servus sacum portat. Qui servus, which served? Servus qui sacum portat est sirus. The servant who is carrying yeah. the sacrum yeah. sirius. Right. right, and the important thing is, is the quis and the qui here. Mm -hmm. In English, we do not, di well, we sort of, I guess we distinguish it a little bit like saying which. So may maybe I guess we do. Uh, is ile servus sacum portat? You could either say he is the servant carrying the sack, or you can say ile. And ile, let me pop over to my charts here uh where did i put it here do 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 give me a minute uh there it is ile is generally that or those okay so you might I look it was the, this what i thought it was this this no, no, that's oh no 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 this is hick hake hawk. Yeah, this is when you're clearing your throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Right? Right, 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 right. 
Yeah, I, I think that's the easiest way to remember it is you're about to, um, well, let me put this undelicately. You're, you're about to uh, hack a loogie, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's this. So the ile, ila ilud, is that or that one. So, yeah, but go ahead. But it's a plural, right? But the, but the, I thought it was, I thought the uh, verb was singular and so is uh, servos, is one servant. It's not plural servants. Right. Well, let's pop back. So, am I missing something? No. Oh, here, let, let me, here, let me make this bigger here. All you may be missing are your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> My there we go. <laughs> there we go. See, it's is or ile. Right. Is can be uh, uh, this one or he, the one, the one we're talking about, is carrying mm -hmm. the sack. Or you can say ile, meaning uh, that servant is carrying the sack. You can do either one there. And that could be, and that is understood as being plural? No. It's all singular. Is and ila are singular. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking. Oh, my gosh. I was looking at the wrong chart. Never mind. I'm an idiot. May we quote you? Yes, you may. Okay. That's my standard. Yeah, ila, ili. Yeah, yeah. Ile, ili. Yes, ila, ila, ilud. Mm -hmm. Masculine, neuter. Oh, sorry, masculine, feminine, neuter. Yeah. So, Julius servum vocat, quem servum. Now, notice in this case, the quem is because we're talking about the servant being called. So, that's mm -hmm. accusative. So, Julius servum vocat, quem servum. Servus quem Julius vocat est Cyrus. Okay. Julius eum or ilum servum vocat. You can use either eum or ilum here. They both work. Um, uh, Julius calls. Uh, so they're in the accusative, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Let, let me go back here for just a second. Oh, where did I do the east? Uh, okay, I know it's in here someplace. Where did I put it? You is it in here? Yeah. Okay. It is a uh, id. Mm -hmm. you know, we've seen it's used for he, she, and it. Okay, and that certainly works, but it also means. Uh, it, in a literal sense, it means that one and refers to the previously mentioned noun. So really, um, ile and uh, is and ile in these particular um, contexts, or or am and ilum in this case, ilum. Mm, excuse me. Good soup, but I'm burping. Um, would work here either one. So you can either say. Uh, Julius calls that servant either way. Yeah, and, and it's got to match. It, yes, got to match, match servant. Servant, so it's got to be in the accusative. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Julius Dominus Servi Est. Julius is the master of the servant. Cuius Servi. Cyrus est servus cuius dominus Julius est. So whose servant? Now notice that is in the possessive or the genitive. Cuius servi. Cyrus est servus cuius dominus Julius est. Julius dominus eus or ilius servi est. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Julius, servo malum dat. And do note that the A is marked with a macaroni. Macaroon. Yeah, with a macaroon. Uh, macaroon. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they had left it off, then uh, 
can't hand him hand him service uh, evil, right? He's, yeah, he's giving us something bad. You know, yeah. bad what? So look, well, that's that's in the and maybe this is future. I think. Pardon? I have a feeling that is something to do with me, the future of his servant Medus. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Medus is not going to get Malum, but he's going to get Malum <laughs> uh, without the macaroons. Mm -hmm. Julius servo malum dot cui servo. So to which servant? Julius gives an apple to the servant. Which servant? Servus cui Julius malum dot estirus. Julius a e ili servo malum dot. So Julius gives an apple to, again, that servant or would be the best way to put that in English. Sacus a servo portatur. Okay. A quo servo. So the sack is being carried by the servant. A quo servo. By which servant? Servos a quo sacus portatur est siris. Sacus ap eo ilo servo portatur. So really, uh, you know, the 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 uh, form of all of these is they're going to make a statement, they're going to ask the question, and they they have actually two different ways of saying it. Okay. Uh, the first way uses the um, the um, the relative uh, pronoun. And then the second one uses the uh, demonstrative, as they're called. In other words, basically the the uh, qui que quis and the uh, is ea id or the ila ila ilud. And you were about to ask something. I was going to say, could you say the servant carries the sack of of um, Dominus or Julius? Julius, Julius uh huh. Would be acceptable too as an answer. I'm kind of switching it around a bit. Oh, um, yeah, you could. Um, you could certainly say um, servus, sacus domini portat. Right. Uh, the servant carries the sack. The, master, uh, the, the sack of the master. Yeah, the yeah. sack of the master. Blech. Yeah, uli or domini, either one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Servi. Sacus, sorry, servi sacos portant. So now we're talking about all of them. Yeah, right. Qui servi. Servi qui sacos portant sunt siris et leander. And so what we've done here is we've gone from the singular up here to the plural down there. And so, um, you know, instead of qui servus, which servant, Qui servi, which servants? And one of the more curious things, let me haul up this. Uh, here we go. Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. Yes, one of the interesting ones is for the relative pronoun, qui, qua, quad, the plurals are qui, qua, qua. So both singular and plural have the same form. Hmm. And that's uh, other than the uh, the nominative. That's the only place where you see the two uh, singular and plural match. Is, is it happens to be in the nominative. So, and even then, it's only in the masculine and the feminine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to remember because we're used to that long I at the end for plurals and the AE for feminine plurals. Plural, right. And that one, well, normally that would be an A for the neuter plurals, but you know, there's always got to be some troublemaker in the list. Yeah, the feminine singular with the AE. Again, you, you think it would be plural. Yep. Okay, let's see. Back to here. Uh, Julius servos vocat. Quos servos servi quos Julius vocat sunt siris et Leander. Julius eos ilos servos vocat. So again, 
we've gone from the singular form to the plural forms. Julius Dominus Servorum est, quorum Servorum, Servi quorum Dominus est Julius sunt Cyrus et Leander. So again, from the, or well, excuse me, from the, uh, there we go, from the singular to the plural. Any questions so far? No. Okay. See how far do we have? Do we it's got just keeping all of this straight when I go to do the homework and, and do the reading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that's why. Seriously, run through this on your own a couple times. Um, um, if you're just reading along, like in the liturgy or something, especially the liturgy, where you have some idea what the meaning is to begin with. Uh, you can figure it out pretty easily, but you want to be able to go both ways, English to Latin. Well, you, you both want to think in Latin and use the Latin, um, both when you're listening, you can think of that as Latin to English, although you shouldn't be translating, but then you want to go the other way. That's like English to Latin. Again, you want to be thinking in Latin. Um, I don't know how to describe that other than the fact that when I read Julius Dominus Servorum Est, it stays in Latin. I don't think Julius, okay, that, that's Julius and Dominus, that means master and servorum. Oh, yeah, that means servant, and that's a plural genitive, and, and est is the verb to be, and then you put it all together, and you have uh, Julius is the uh, master of the servants. It's not the way I do it. I just see Julius Dominus Servorum Est. Yeah, I see it in the singular, but then when I, you know, that yeah, well, that yeah, wrong. I, the word gets longer, I get a little mm -hmm. yeah. That's called repetitio. Yes, sir. It's called practice. Yes, correct. Practice and repetition. Yes, yes, and sometimes some things need more practice and more repetition than others. So, mm -hmm. all right, Julius. Oh, now we're now we're uh, going to do the plural for the apples. Julius servis maladat. Quibus servis, servi quibus Julius maladat sunt siris et leandor. Now, I am going to branch off for just a second here because I think I stuck this at the end. No, where did I put it? No. Oh, I thought I put it in here. Did I not do that? Did I not do that? I'm looking for it. I don't see it either. Uh, no. Oh. Oh, no, those were conjugations. Never mind. Okay. The reason I had a, a brief digression uh, is you're going to see later on. Oh, no, actually, let me go back to the charts. Well, the quibus? No, let me um, pick this guy up. These endings you're going to see in the next chapter. Because these endings are close to what the third declension is. So if you see an ebus, <laughs> like down here, mm -hmm. that's a classic dative and ablative plural for the third declension. Okay. We haven't had it yet. Um, so it, it may be that um, when we go into the third declension, sorry, when we go into the next section, chapter nine, that when they introduce these, it may make these make a little more sense. So um, uh, these, so anyway, um, so at least the plurals anyway, well, sorry, the ebus, <laughs> I take it back. The ebus is the, uh, is the declension. Yeah, peccatoribus, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, so um, it might make it easier, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, so quibus servis servi quibus Julius maladat sunt liris et leandor. Iis ilis servus servis maladat. So again, Julius is giving apples to the servant, servants, sorry, which servants, quibus, since it's plural, 
servi quibus Julius maladat sunt siris et leander, and then iis and ilis, which are the plural forms. Saci a servis portantur, a quibus servis, servi a quibus saci portantur sunt siris et leandur. Again, the plural form. We had sacum. As, let's see, what did we have? Uh, yeah, sacum. Yes. Uh, sacum yes. A servo. There we go. A quo servo. So now we're going to do saci a servis portantur. A quibus servis, plural, a quo servo. Uh, servi a quibus saci portantur sunt siris et leander. So that's, and whereas up here, okay. Uh, servos a quo sacos portatur es yeah. So it's plural. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. And I think that, ah, feminum. Okay. Now those are all nice masculine nouns. Okay. Mm -hmm. Feminine. Same, almost the exact same thing here, except with feminine in it. Anchila op est. The handmaiden is absent. I kind of like the word absent. Right. Yes, up est. Que ancilla, ancilla que up est est sira. Ea ila ancilla up est. So we're basically repeating the exact same thing, uh, grammatically that is, except using feminine nouns. So qui, que, qui, que, uh, Is ila ea ila. Julius ancilum vocat. Quam ancilum. Ancilum quam Julius vocat est sira. Julius eam ilam ancilum vocat. So here we have the nominative form, and then we have the accusative form, and then we have the genitive form. And then we have the dative form, form. Right. and then we have the ablative form, since op takes the ablative. So if you pop over to, yeah, see, they the sentences follow the standard order in which the, the Familia Romana presents the cases or, or orders them in the list. So, so, um, uh, so this is fairly straightforward. I'm not going to say easy. That that that's not quite right. But I no, mean, now that you're explaining it, it 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 seems to make more sense. Well, it, Under, it builds. I'm getting it. I'm, I'm understanding it better. Good. It builds on 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 the uh, on it. So mm -hmm. let's see where were we? Oh, Julius, Dominus Ancile est. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Teresa says it always makes more sense. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, that's true of most subjects, not just Latin. I mean, there there are times I took in some of my physics classes, you know, I, uh, the professor explained it. I totally understood it. And then I went home to do the homework problems. And it was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> How does this work now? <laughs> so, yeah, I can relate. Uh, but notice, okay, while Anchile could be genitive or plural, we see that here. Um, it's, it can't be plural because of that. It can't be plural. There's nothing plural here to attach it. So, exactly. Yeah, so it's got to be genitive. And, and English has the same thing. You know, handmaiden, one. Handmaidens can either be apostrophe S. And the only reason, you know, we, we do that you don't do that in speech, you know. Uh, so if I just say handmaidens, you don't know if I'm talking about two or more or if I'm talking about something possessive. So English and Latin actually share that uh, particular thing. Julius Dominus Ancile est, cuius Ancile, Syria, or sorry, Syria, not Syria. <laughs> Syria has been in the news lately. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, way too much. <clears throat> Sira est Ancilla, cuius Dominus Julius est. So Sira is the handmaid whose master is Julius. Uh, what, what's this wrong? Why does he got an I period? I don't know. That was up above, too. Did I miss I was, it? Yeah. Uh, line 156. Uh, oh, wow. That threw me off when I was reading it in the book. I had no idea what that was for. Is it in the book, too? Well, supposedly what's on the screen should be exactly what's in the book. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Huh. I... <sighs> Unless they're showing it as it, this is example one. I don't know. Well, okay. If they're going to use that as he, let, uh, up here... This, yeah, but you don't have I that stands alone, do you? Yeah, I don't know what an I that stands alone. It could be an is. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me look plural? at something. Let me look at something. Yeah, would that be plural of this? Uh, all right. I? Hold on here. Uh, ninth, no, it's ninth. Let, let, let me look at something here for a moment. I think this is an alternative use. No, because that was E. What's the plural of this? I know it's so, but is it could it also be I? Well, no. Is, okay. Is, if was, I mean is I S and then yeah, just it's, it's I, gotta be yeah, it's gotta be I S for he. Right. So and it's also I peer oh. What what what? <laughs> All right, tell us the joke. I believe that stands for Julius. That is the abbreviation. Oh, God. Okay. That makes some sense. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me yeah. put it this way. That's the only thing I could that I can get sense out of it. So that, that's a new one. Um, huh. I, I don't know if uh, 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 Lucas Ranieri ran th through the... Um, Grammatica Latina of chapter eight. I may uh, look that one up just to see what he says. I thought in some of the homework they do that. They abbreviate. Oh, they may. They don't. I don't know. This is the first time I see the eye alone. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to make that Julius. You got it. I hereby declare it Julius because otherwise, um, let's see, do we have any more eyes? Uh, yeah, uh, you just passed it on my yeah, 66. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, that, that's yeah. good. There is no Latin word, I. I, right. I mean, so. Yeah, I think he was just taking a shortcut. Yeah, and now, and I wouldn't use is there. Because then you have is, is servus maladat, and you've got two of the same demonstrative pronouns in the same subject, or, or uh, sorry, in the same sentence. And um, uh, it, so, it's usually, so I, I, it's got to be Julius. Right, so. right, 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 right. All right, where was I? Uh, down here at 66. Down there, yeah, this is the first time I noticed it. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay. it. So, so anyway, Julius Dominus. Okay, we did the um, yeah, is is the uh master of the handmaidens or servants. Mm -hmm. Uh all right. Julius Ancile Malum dat. Julius gives the apple to the handmaid. Cui Ancile, which handmaid? Ancilla cui Julius malum dat est sira. Julius, a e e li Ancile malum dat. That's why I'm pretty sure that's got to be a Julius. I don't know why they abbreviated it. Maybe because it would have made a really rotten word wrap. I don't know. Uh, 
Julius ab Anchila sal salutatur. So now we're back to the passive voice with a a op or ops, which makes it ablative. So Julius ab Anchila salutatur. So Julius is greeted by the handmaid, aqua Anchila, by which handmaid? Anchila aqua Julius salutatur est sira. Julius ab ea. Vel illa Anchila salutatur. Um, vel, I think you, you guys know what vel is. It means or. Uh, let me pop up my, uh, let's see, where did we put it? Oh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Vel. Yeah, vel. Latin has two words for or. Vel. And uh, um, out. Vel, okay, out is an exclusive or. I, I covered this earlier, meaning either or. So I think I have some example. Um, let's see, do I have? Yeah, okay. Uh, habeas pirum ot malum. You may have a pear or an apple, but not both. So the ought there says you get one or the other, not both. Vel, on the other hand, means you can you can do one, the other, or both. So when I say, whoops, let me get the right screen back. So when I say, Julius ap ea vel ila, meaning you can use either one there, ancila salutatur. Anchile absunt. Okay, now we've got a big plural here. Que anchile, anchile que absunt sunt sira edelia. Ee or ile, anchile absunt. In fact, ile anchile absunt just rolls off the tongue. You notice that? Mm -hmm. So Romans would probably say ile anchile absunt, although they could say ee. But Julius Anchilas Vocat. Again, we're now doing the plural forms here. Quas Anchilas. We had, uh, let's see, we had Quam Anchilam, which handmaid was he calling? This is Quas, plural, Anchilas. Anchile Quas Julius Vocat sunt sira edelia. Julius Eas vel ilas. Anchilas vocat. Any questions? Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get to the litany of St. Joseph for uh, <laughs> for um, Teresa's sake. Mm -hmm. But I do want to get through all of this. Let's see. I oh, think please, yeah. Tables. Yeah. Okay. They give the tables. Yeah. Heek. Heek. Hawk. Yeah. Okay. And yeah we're okay where was i whoops so i want to get through the uh, neuter as well uh where was i okay julius dominus ancillarum est julius is the master of the handmaidens quarum ancillarum ancilla quarum ancillarum Again, hmm. just rolls off the tongue. Rolls off. Yeah, that's that's one of the neat things about Latin is it tends to be fairly um, melodic. Mm -hmm. uh, English, being part of the Proto-Germanic tree originally, is kind of um, uh, well. You can do it. I mean, look at uh, Shakespeare's iambic pentameter sonnets and poems. You know, I mean, it's so. But you kind of have to work at it. Whereas in Latin, it tends to do itself naturally. Anyway, quarum ancillarum, ancile quarum dominus est Julius, sunt sira edelia. Okay. Julius dominus earum vel ilarum ancillarum est. So again, just here's the plural. And up here we had the singular. Singular. Let's see. Uh, Julius, 
There we go. Anchilis maladat, quibus anchilis, anchile quibus iulus maladat sunsira edelia, iulius iis vel ilis anchilis maladat. So, Julius gives apples to the handmaids. Which handmaids? The handmaids which Julius gives apples are Syra and Delia. I have a question. Gives apples to those handmaidens. Yeah, go ahead. First off, it's funny. Every time Steve snores, I get this notice. You need to hold out your space bar if you want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, okay. So if Julius Anchilis Maladat, what if he gave one apple? Would the sentence just be too ambiguous? Would they have to split the apple or are they getting one apple each? How would you say Okay. That? No, if they were getting one apple, then you would use Malam. Yeah, you am. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just in English. Julius gave No, no, I mean it's the it's is each how would you say that he's giving an apple to each one, each person, as opposed oh. to giving them just one apple? Um well he gives them if if you make that mala malum, then then that's singular, so you know he's giving a apple to the servants. Well, he could be giving them one apple to split between the two of them. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, I would ex yeah. go ahead. Um, you under understood that you're you're giving them each one apple. Where that would be. Um. I'd have to think about that. Well, you know, you'd have to cha change and chill. You, you well, would say Julius gives an apple to each uh, handmaiden. I don't know what the word for uh, Well, there's a word. I'm going to drop. Let's see if I can copy it. There we go. Let's see if I can drop it in the uh, dictionary. Yeah. Unus quisque, which means each one singly, singly. Singular, yeah, okay. Singularly, li, 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 li. <laughs> can't say that word. Um, so there are um, hmm. uh, there are a couple of different words. Um, there, um, the other one. Okay, then the other word here. Well, wait, real quick, if you use that word, then you would have to, would you change the handmaidens from plural to singular? Singular? No, 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 you, 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 you would have them plural. Okay. Um, actually, I, I take that back. You'd probably use singularly. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. So, yeah. yes, singularly, um, because you're saying you gave each one. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, so uh, I gave them one apple. Yeah. So you, you, you get confused, like Teresa was I, saying. You would do something like this. Mm -hmm. Let's let me. Um, and she sing you lease. Sing you lease. There we go. You'd end up with something like this. Uh, whoops. Julius. <laughs> oh, dear. I got mangled. <laughs> Let me try that again. That's what happens when you uh, type in Latin uh, and your, um, uh, your um, there we go. Your autocorrect does weird things. There we go. So, no, you, you would say, uh, in this case, it's very specific. The singularis is each handmaiden he gave, and you might actually, um, uh, actually, you know what you'd probably do if you want, if you're going to be specific about one apple. There we go. 
And I apologize for the lack of the macarons. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I can yes. see it. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the the uh, um, the uh, unus quisque is um, it also means uh, each one singly, singular, sing, singularly, uh, but uh, it has a slightly different construction. So let's stick with singularly here. Mm -hmm. uh, where were we? Uh, did we? I think we got. Okay. All, yeah, we got all the way through there, didn't we? Oh no, we. Uh, no, you stop right there. Quibus. Uh, yeah. yeah, Julius ab Ancilius salutantur a quibus Ancilis Ancile a quibus Julius salutantur salutatur sunt sira et delia ab iis vel ilis Ancilis Julius salutatur. So, neuter. Well, same pattern, but we get uh, annulus. And let's see, what are the other things? Uh, and, oh, and we're going to have some ornamentums in here. So, oh, we have some sesterzi. Oh, there we go. All right. Quid est annulus. Now, this is not who is a ring, <laughs> but this is what is a ring. And notice Latin distinguishes between who, quis and que, masculine, feminine, mm -hmm. and then what, which is things. Okay. So annulus here is what? Masculine, right? Mm-hmm. Quid is neuter, right? So why mm -hmm. does the masculine go with the neuter? And the answer is because in asking questions about things, we use quid. So this is one of the few cases where it breaks the, the uh, gender agreement. And that's to signify that you're talking about an inanimate object. So when you're quid, asking a specific thing about that, it, about be, an object, not a person. Yeah, and not, yeah, not a person, right. These up here were person or persons. Why do I want to say person or persons unknown? I've probably watched too many hmm. spy movies or detectives. Um, again, quiz. And we're talking about the servants. So... Our servant. Male, male servants, hmm. in this case. So... Uh, annulus est ornamentum. A ring is an ornament or jewelry. Uh, we'd probably use the word jewelry, but ornament is kind of a generic term in Latin for all sorts of stuff. Um, let's see, do I have, okay, let me, let me do something here. Ornamentum. Yeah, I was wondering if there's a specific word for jewelry, and they're just giving us ornamentum to get us started in the learning process. Yeah, um, it really means anything. <laughs> uh, uh, in English, let's see. Let, let me hold on. Let me um, let me add some sharing here. In English, it's more descriptive. Yes. Well, jewelry, yeah. Um, let's let me add uh, this guy. There we go, whoops, and I lost it there. Yeah, this is the one you can see. Uh, apparatus, accoutrement, equipment, furniture, trappings, mark of honor, decoration, embellishment, jewel, trinket. <laughs> I mean, it's there's a lot of different possibilities. Michael, um, real quick, what's that, what dictionary is that again you're using? Oh, this is the uh, Ultralingua. Ultralingua. Okay, yeah, good. now this Thank is you. the iPad version. Fine, I have an iPad too. Besides yeah, well, and, and yeah, and you can use it on an iPad if you have one of the new iMacs that has the M1 chip. I got, yeah, also, I got the M2. Oh, or the M2, now I'm jealous. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> you can run iPad apps on the M1 or M2. Does it also work on the iPhone? Uh, yes, just, I oh, believe. Beautiful. I think so. I'm not sure. Um, let me see if I have it on my iPhone. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so you can see, the only reason I use this one is it strips out a lot of the more in, interesting information. Exactly. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't overload you with Which, the, the you know, for you guys, uh, uh, you know, is, is not, uh, um, is not such a bad thing. I'll put it this way. If you want to know the definition rather qu quickly, I would use this. But then if you want to see a breakdown in the whole bit, it seems like that would, well, but this does it too. So, yes. Spell jewelry. J-U-E-W. Hmm. Yeah, jewelry is like nu nuclear. <laughs> People always mispronounce it. And, and, and realtor, not rel realtor. Realtor. It's, no. How do people say that? They always say it wrong. I'm seeing you saying realtor. Yeah. Oh, they say the realtor is what they say. Yes, I understand exactly. Okay, hold on here. How the heck do you spell jewelry? All right, hold on here. Jewelry. There we go. No, I can't type it either. Hmm. How do you spell it? Why don't you put it in English and go the other way? Uh, well, that's what I'm doing here, but I can't type the English right. Um, no, I just search for verbs. Let me do it this way. Uh, jewelry. There we go. Oh, there is no word for jewelry in my dictionary. Huh. That's hard to imagine. Let me try lowercase. Huh, interesting. Okay. I'll have to look that up sometime. Um, hmm. Oh, well, enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, ornamentum is a very general term. Uh, and we have it in English, ornament. Well, what's mm -hmm. this ornament? Well, it can be jewelry. It can be a thing you hang on your Christmas tree. Uh, um, I suppose it could even be a Halloween decoration. Mm -hmm. Anyway, quad ornamentum. Annulus est ornamentum quad digitum ornat. Now, in this case, what ornament and there's and there's the answer annulus est ornamentum quad digitum or not meaning uh, a ring is an ornament which adorns a finger id vel illud ornamentum pulcrum est it is a pretty ornament I don't know. I've seen some ugly ornaments, so. <laughs> but uh, we won't we won't uh, put uh, too much uh, value judgment here on uh, taste. Quid Lydia in colo habet? What again? We're asking a what does Lydia have on her neck? Ornamentum habet. Quad ornamentum, ornamentum quad lydia in colo habet est linea margaritarum. Litrum. Yeah, so she has a line, <laughs> yeah, a line of pearls <laughs> or a string of pearls. I'm sorry, every time I see Margar Margarita, I keep thinking they're getting drunk. <laughs> Well, I have a hard time making that my brain is gets stuck on alcohol instead of pearls. Um, I think you got a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I the way I'd phrase that is um, margaritas are the pearl of drinks, right? Uh -huh. 
That's good. I'll have to take your word for it since I don't drink at all. Oh, you don't drink anyway. Oh, boy. No. Oh, okay. Um, well, you're on your own, <laughs> I guess. Uh, now, is it, do, wait a minute. Do margaritas are those the ones with the salt around the rim, or am I thinking of another drink? No, that's that's no, not that's right. right. Yeah. Okay, so you can think of the salt as little pearls around the rim of the cup. Then, yeah. Now, uh, Francis asked a. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I finally figured out how to spell jewelry. <laughs> I, I kept wanting to get an extra e in there. Uh, jewelry, yeah. It's kind of like Feb February. Where did the where that extra syllable go? Um, yeah, a linea it would be just a string. Okay, so I wouldn't call it a necklace. I would just call it a string. So if we go back to our uh, dictionary here and we look up linea. Uh, hmm. It's a linen thread, a line, a string, fishing line. Um, it can be any kind of string type line. Uh, linea can refer to a bow string, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if it doesn't have any decoration on, no, I wouldn't even go with a gold chain. Um, hmm. uh, okay, that could work. Linea, uh, Gemma. Uh, don't. Yeah, I'm thinking of a necklace with stones in it instead of pearls. That right. might work. Yeah, yeah, that might work. Or diamonds, they would, they, you know, uh, diamond necklace. Diamonds, they would have, but I don't know how they, 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 they can't drill holes in those. <laughs> yeah, no, they, oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, anyway, quad, ornamentum, ornamentum. Oh, we actually did that. Lydia. Mm -hmm. Id vel ilud ornamentum amat. So Lydia loves that bauble. Uh, yeah, they could have strung the settings together, um, but that would have been, um, uh, I don't think it would have been referred to as a string of diamonds. I mean, you can get pearls and you can drill holes in them. And so you could have a string of pearls uh, some of the precious stones or semi-precious stones you can drill holes in. Mm -hmm. You could uh, you could probably have a a, a, um, a string of that, but um, diamonds would be something they they'd use a different. Um, so okay, so so uh, gems that were in settings and then hooked together to make a chain, that would be a different word than linear. yeah. You'd probably use chain as opposed to linea. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd have to go back and, I, I don't recall reading in the uh, Vulgate anywhere that, um, well, there were certainly a lot of decorated people running around, but I, I don't recall um, any specifics as like a chain of, of um, um, actually there is a way to find out, but we'll do that later. Let's get through this. Pretium ornamenta. Est sisterzi. Um, and HS here is the abbreviation for a Cistercian. And C is a hundred. Oh, I wonder if they mention what the abbreviation for I is. Did they mention it back here? Uh, I think they just dumped them on us. Yeah, I think they just did. I don't see it. Wait a minute. Maybe is it on the next? Ah, here it is. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Cuius ornamenti. Ornamentum cuius pretium est. Oh, I didn't know that was the form for his uh, for Cistercians. Anyway, Cisterci centum est annulus. That C there is 100. Right. Pretium eius or vel ilius ornamenta est centum cistercia. Fluvius opido aquum dat. The river gives water to the city. So now we're doing the, the dative here. Cui opido, 
which city? Opidum cui fluvius aquum dat est Capua. So the city which the river gives water to is Capua. Fluvius ei vel ilii opido aquum dat. And so let's see here. Oh, okay. Now we're going to do the ablative. Cornelius in parvo opido habitat. In quo opido? Opidum in quo Cornelius habitat est tusculum. In eo vel ilo opido habitat Cornelius. Hmm. So yes, Tusculum was a relatively small town. Um, and I forget when, exactly when it was destroyed by earthquake. I believe there's ruins there and, and there may be a few people. There may be some stuff left in it, but it was largely destroyed. Um, I need to find, let me see here. When was that destroyed? I know I mentioned this earlier. Uh, Tusculum. Tusculum. Yeah. Ruined Roman city. Yeah. Da, da, da. Location. Roman Republic. Uh, okay. When was it destroyed? Wasn't that that video you showed us? Uh, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it was in the uh, fifth century, early, um, early fifth century. It was destroyed. No, well, maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, there are ruins there. I mean, you can go and right. visit, you can go and visit it today if you if you know if you're in Italy. But there's um, it's um, pretty much uh, it was abandoned in the fifth century. Quay opida pro. Romam sunt. Which cities are near Rome? Ostia et Tusculum sunt opida que prope Romam sunt. Mm -hmm. Ea vel ila opida prope Romam sunt. So now we're hitting the plurals. Mm -hmm. Alpinus ornamenta vendit que ornamenta. Ornamenta que albinos vendit sunt annuli. Ah, now we have the A. Okay, that's got to be albinos. There's no other way. Yes, there you go. Ea ila ornamenta vendit A. So again, plural, which ornaments? Ornaments which A sells are rings. And that may be a, a way to uh, to um, help remember that because th this quay here is actually, okay. <sighs> All right, some terminology. The quay opida crope romam sunt. Which towns? Okay, this is an interrogative. It's a fill in the blank, okay. When we go to, um, whoops. Where did I, did I, I got lost? Right. Um, right there. Oh, here it is. Here it 21. is. Albinus. Yeah. So this is um, 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 but when we go to the quay here, this is the relative pronoun because you see the quay. Well, okay. Because one you're talking about cities and the other one you're talking about things. Well, no, no, no. Like, that's like, not what I want to say. This is a question about. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to. All right, this is a question about what cities are near Rome. Fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. This, on the other hand, is a state that, statement that Albinus is selling ornaments, which. Ornaments and ornamenta que uh, albinos vendent sunt annuli. So he's this quay and that quay are the same. Yeah, also doing is he's just reversing it. He says, "What what ornaments does he sell? The ornaments he sells are are the uh, yeah. yeah. The ornaments are. Uh, I had it in my head. 
No, I can't say it. Ornaments. What ornaments? Uh, the the ornament. What? Well, it's the ornaments that he sells. Right. That, well, right. I, I understand it, but I can't put it in English. Yeah. All right. Pretium ornament. Oh, we were doing. We were already. Oh, we were already doing. Oh, okay. We get get it again. Pretium right. ornamentum est. Centum sestertii, quorum ornamentum, ornamenta quorum cretium est sestertii centum annuli sunt. Cretium eorum vel ilorum ornamentum est sestertii, I can't say cistercians, <laughs> sestertii, there we go, centum. I don't know why. Sesterzii. It's not that hard a word. Oh, well. Fluvi. Opidus aquam dant. So now we're doing plural here. Rivers give water to the cities. Quibus opidus. Which cities? Opido. Quibus fluvi aquam dant sunt capua et brundisium. Fluvii. Iis vel ilis opidus aquam dant. And then last, feminae ornamentus delectantur. Women are pleased by ornaments, by jewelry. Quibus ornamentus. Ornamentus quibus feminae delectantur sunt margarite et gemme. They like Gems and pearls. Mm -hmm. Iis vel ilis ornamentus delectantur feminae. So those ornaments um, um, are, oh boy, how do we want to say this? Uh, are ple um, Yeah, are pleasing to women. Or I should say women are pleased by those ornaments let me let me um, actually use the um, um, passive voice there because feminine is the subject the women are being pleased delighted by those ornaments all right so what do we got oh yeah we got 15 minutes left okay um the this is the conjugation or sorry the declension of he cake hawk uh they're giving you know um words to go by Mur Mur let's see did they do did they do uh muris i don't think we've had muris have we anybody know what a muris muris that's a, a wall it's a wall yes yeah. yeah we had it briefly a couple of chapters back i think the wall around rome oh that's right there was a uh yeah that's right there was chapter five or six i think uh, yeah, muritus is what we usually think of. Um, I would just, um, yeah, wall would have been a nicer way of, of translating that in this case. So, all right. Uh, so, and then of course there are the pensums and some of you have actually gotten into that, I believe. I think, uh, let's see, where are we? Let me see here. Uh, oh, I don't think anybody's got into the pensums, actually. Last mm -hmm. one I remember is exercise 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Undechum. Um, all right. So any questions on chapter eight? And then we'll try the litany of St. Joseph just to be different. No, just just going to have to study it more. Yes, we're getting getting bombarded with a lot of uh, different usage of different words. Yeah, this is see, chapter eight doesn't have a whole lot of vocabulary. Let's um, no, but what they use, it's yeah, you it's better, used all you over know. the place. Yeah, see, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay, we got a few. I, I take that back, but they're not super difficult. Taberna, Gemma, Margarita, tab Tabernarius, Ornamentum. I mean, those aren't too bad. No, I'm getting, I'm getting mixed up with the relative pronouns and the demonstrative pronouns, you know. Well, ching, ching, ching. 
Yeah, uh, well. That's all, yeah. Yeah, just. Uh, I'm, I've got it, when you do it, I'm, I'm looking at your chart as I'm doing my homework. <laughs> yeah, don't think of them so much as, as in that category as to. Um, well, I'm also trying to figure out what, what case they are. Uh, as far as that part goes, because then I get a better understanding of what, what how it's being used in the sentence. Used, okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, we'll have to go to. So shall we go to the litany of Saint Joseph? Sure. Right. Love to. All right. By the yeah. way, I need to. Um, let's see. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. I need to put on the uh, my website the uh, litany of German saints. Um, I ran across it the other day. Um, there was a gentleman who actually, he was the king of something. And I can't remember what the details are. Um, he wrote a book that had some marvelous prayers, particularly St. Michael, some of which I do have on my website, um, and a couple of others. And uh, he eventually uh, became a monk. And so uh, one of the things he wrote were prayers, uh, and it, was, it wasn't it was in Germany, but today we would identify the area as Germany, or maybe Poland, now that I think about it. Um, but the German-Polish border, you know, went all over the place over the centuries. And uh, given what uh, <laughs> is brewing with the German bishops, <laughs> I really ought to put that on there. All right. Uh, whoops. No. Oh, well, that's right. I can go directly to St. Joseph. And litany of St. Joseph. Is that the one you had questions on, Teresa? Yes. The Catholic daughters were, were going through a consecration to St. Joseph. And this oh. is how we close. It's a 33-day process. I got my little book in front of me. We've got a meditation and some readings every day that we do, but we always end with this. And uh, on Sunday nights, we had a, a uh, over the phone meeting and I was whenever I tried to read this myself, so a tongue trips over some of the words. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or wrong or whatever. So if I could get the pronunciation straight, I think it would be easier. Okay. Where in particular? Uh, let me see. You get down to the east of it's it's a there's one the obedient jo joseph most obedient uh which uh, syllable do i put the uh stress on obedientissime obedientissime yes obedientissime. okay um, i let's see if my dictionary has oops uh hold on here let me get the other one up I don't think. Oh, come on now. Oh, oh. oh Latin. Oh, I bet it doesn't have it. Oh, all right. Um, shucks. Well, let's do it this way. Okay. Uh, new slide. Okay. We have trying to think of a good adjective. Um, oh, we'll do O B D ends. Let me get that spelling right for a second here. Uh, I have learned the ECMA is like the most. Yes. You know, that's what I was the getting. ultimate. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and obedient. Yeah. I mean, it's um, the verb is obedio. Which uh, actually, let me let me copy it with the macrons here. 
There we go. And it means um, to give ear, to listen to, to obey. Okay, we get, the, you know, so let's just keep it simple and say obey for the moment. Now, this is, whoops, sorry. Obedience would be obedient. I did spell that right, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, you did. Now, in English, we would say more obedient. <laughs> um, but in Latin, it is obedi or. Okay. Hmm. Let me double check that, make sure I get that right. Uh, so like good, better, best, this would be the better one. Yeah. Oh, they don't have, they don't have the superlative form. So I am, I'm crushed. Oh, I know why, because I have to take off the macrons. <sighs> there we go. Okay. So let's see if they have the, oh, they don't have it. All right. Well, I'm going to have to do this one. <laughs> and then most obedient is obedi and TC May. Where's my, um, uh, oh, come on. Uh, there we go. Now, match style. Now we got to put in a US in there. Obedientissimus. Um, the OR ending is kind of like our ER ending. Okay. Um, fast, faster, fastest. Mm -hmm. So, um, obedior obedientissimus and the long one let's see do i have that is um in this case it is a long whoops a long what oh hold on uh, i'm not using my extended keyboard there we go the um this is a short eye. This is a long eye. So the stress goes on that imus, obedientissimus. And uh, actually, is that right? Hmm, let me think about that. Obedientissimus. Because Optimus, this yeah, you know, Optimus. The uh, I'm going to mumble to myself here for a second. Optimus is hmm, um, let me check something on that. They had that wrong. <clears throat> Then we look up something here. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, let's see here if they have. Oh, they don't have. Oh, they don't have it. Okay looking for a nice place that had the macrons. Hey, Michael. I pulled my book out 
and we don't have the macrons in my book, but I'm looking at, they do have stress marks and they have the stress mark over the, the first eye. Yeah. 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 No, I was, I oh. was realizing that, no, the, this, uh, I had it incorrect. I was mumbling. Um, yeah. I was mumbling to myself how that, where that accent went. Obedientissimus, simus. Because that eye is long and the stress goes there, that one tends to lengthen out a little bit. Obedientissimus, simus. So yeah, these should always, uh, these all have the, uh, and by the way, that, that of course is vocative. So um, yeah, if you notice, Yosef justissime, most just, but justissime, we're invoking Saint Joseph here. So Yosef castissime, uh, Yosef prudentissime, most prudent, fortissime, uh, most strong. So um, these are all vocative because we're addressing Saint Joseph directly. So, um, you know, oh, here we go, Sancta Yosef. Holy, as opposed to Sanctus Yosef. So, okay. The next work I, word I have a problem with or question on is uh, let me see. I went to a proper documents. Is okay. Exemplar is it opificum or opificum? Um, o p i um. Ooh. Uh, if you could, well, let's consult the dictionary. Okay, I'm like such an idiot now. <laughs> and the answer is, oh, doesn't this one have it? Oh, oh, maybe they're all short. Oh, piffy. Well, all right, let me consult uh, Lewis and Short here. Uh, oh, they're all short. Yep, they're all short. So, whoop, where'd my window go? Ah, yoo -hoo. Come back, browser. I know you're in there. There you go. So, it is opificum. Okay. Yeah, and so the accent there is on the opificum. <laughs> So let okay. me um, let me get this back. Whoops. Paste in that style. Those are all short. So um, oh. Try that again. Oh, no. I'm so used to um, writing out the long. So then we're going to separate a, pi, fi, cum. And the stress is on that one. Okay, perfect. That's what I thought. Pi, cum. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now here's here's a tongue twister for me. The spes agrotonsium. Um, yeah. Well spes, uh, spes is hope, I know that. Yeah. And um agrotonsium. I, I have bad news, it's short, so it should be spes. Spes. Okay. Agrotonsium. 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 I look at that and my tongue was to just wrap itself around my eyeballs and pull them at just Very for good. some reason. It's, okay. So, Patrone Morintensium, Terro Daemonum, Protector Sante Ecclesiae. And so, you think there was one more that. Okay. Amator Popertatis. Popertatis. Don't see it down there, so it must it's be. yeah, it's uh, further up. It's there's a speculum patent, 
Paciencia, and then underneath it is Amator, and then Opportunis. Look for Speculum. There you go. Next one down. Oh, Amator, Amator. Amator. Opetitatis. There's no I in there. Not not where you're putting oh, one I'm anyway. Oh, sorry. Opetitatis. So it's Opertatis? Opertatis. Opertatis. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, further up. Alme familiae praesis. Is that how I say it? It's uh before just before the Joseph yeah, right uh, part, yeah. Alme loving familie family family crisis crisis say that again crisis crisis yeah. let's, let's, let's do this how did they get head of the holy Please. family out of that whoops hold on. Paste. Price this. And so let me get the macrons. Yeah. Price Edit, paste, and match style. So prey is, is long, and that's so prey says. And what's your question? Okay, the the English part uh, translation is head of the holy family. Yeah, okay. I was thinking yeah. Alma, like Alma Mater, you know, they yes. Is it similar to that? Well Chrysas is a protector, guardian, defender. So head of the holy family is a bit it's not terribly literal. Okay. Okay. And Alme uh, actually means uh, loving. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, if, if it were just holy, it would be uh, Santa. But Alme, Alma, Alma Redemptoris Mater, okay, which is loving mother of the Redeemer. So, um, and yes, it it um, it's it's similar to the uh, alumna, or or the um, let's see here, edit. Uh, let's see here if I can. Uh, it's an adjective. So nourishing, cherishing. So that is a pretty, shall we say loose translation of that in fact okay uh, so we'll, just accept it as they have it and not try to yeah, figure out how they but, connect connected it yeah, here we we can do this uh oh president of, oh, <laughs> of the alma family oh wow that's that's pretty bad well they got that uh president too. well all right this is why i don't recommend google, <laughs> google. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it, sometimes it can get stuff right. Okay. I mean, it, it 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 can be it can be useful. All right, it it can be useful, but uh, yeah, it's um. Now here we'll we'll give it we'll give it an easy one. Let's see what this one does. It should get this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very fair. Well, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, uh, it, most just. The idea being, you know, um, well, anyway, never mind. But let's just forget <laughs> Just for grins, give it another Isime and see right, what it right, does. Let's see if we can find some. How about Castissime? Uh, which it one? Easy. This one? Joseph, go up. No, the one right below. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm not sure if uh, Google knows what the word uh, chaste means. That's what I'm <laughs> asking. But let's give it a let's give it a try. Oh, all right. Whoa. Yeah, most got it. They, they got a was in there. I guess they they um well he's past tense, he's no longer with us. Uh well 
problem is this is evocative, you know, they're calling. And so they've turned it into That's a sentence. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, they, they get points for the Joseph most chates, but I got to give them points off for their bad. For the English, what? The grammar. Yeah. But hey, you know. That was the closest they've gotten. So. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's. Um, oh, let's see here. Let's try it. Now, that one should be pretty straightforward. Ah, okay. Well, hope for the sick or hope of the sick. Okay, so all right. But yeah, um, don't uh, use um, don't use uh, Google Translate for any of your um, treaties or uh, doctrinal treaties <laughs> or master's. not for your last will or testament. <laughs> not yeah, right out for the last will and testament. Um, you know, it can be useful if you're absolutely positively stuck. In fact, here, let's let's try this here. Let's see what it does um, here. It may actually do a little better with the prayer. Uh, let's see. Yeah, with more complete sentences, it might. Oh, God, ineffable promise, deign to choose the blessed Joseph's spouse for your most holy Mary. Hey, this isn't bad, Grant. Uh, but you know what? If it's a full prayer, someone may have plugged it in already. Yeah, I wonder. Wow, this is way too good. If you start typing in, like the St. Michael prayer, yeah, it, it, it will. Yeah, it, it will. Yes, it does yeah, recognize certain. And, it, and when it gets to a certain point, then it says, oh, this is the prayer. And then it puts the prayer. You can tell it has to get to a certain number of words that it recognizes in an yeah. order. And then it's got a, a library of, you know, we know this goes with that. Yeah, and actually, and it plugs this, it in. this particular um, collect, as it's called, or ending prayer yeah. is actually used all over the place. So you're probably right. I mean, it's used for his feast. It's used for the litany. Um, it's probably used for the commemoration. Uh, yep, there it is. Yep. So, yeah, pretty much. I mean, so it's used all over the place. Um, so it's probably sitting in the Google library somewhere just waiting to be pulled up. And maybe the little office. What's the collect in the little office here? Oh, there should be a collect in here, isn't there? Uh, conclusive. Let me hop down to the conclusion. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, oh no, I guess not. Okay, but it's pretty. It's pretty common. So yeah, you're probably right, Teresa. Um. So yeah, briefly, I'd have to be extremely des desperate to you to use it. Uh, oh, we were going to look up jewelry. Everybody have a minute to look up what jewelry is in Latin? Sure. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, all right. So the way to do this, and I've done this before, is you want to go up to the Wikipedia of all places and type in. Yay, there we go. Oh, two L's. Oh, well, okay. No, no, one. Is that well, They've got two L's in there. Huh. All right. Well, there may that may be a there may oh okay oh oh one L in American English I should have guessed. But what you can do is yeah yeah is you go over to eighty seven languages, <laughs> and they'll have various ones that are common. But if you search for Latin, and really. You have an A on there instead of Latin, you have Latina. Well, it should be Latina. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Well, let's see what it is in Italian. Uh, Italiano. Let's see what it is in Italiano. Uh, well, that's not even close. Wow. Oh, the entomology. De -de 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 entomology here do latini gaudia okay posse or yokale okay interesting uh interesting huh. apparently there was not a pure word in latin for jewelry which is kind of interesting hmm. all right but Let's try so I guess they didn't think of everything after all. Uh, well, they uh, Romans tended to be fairly literally minded. So, um, you know, linea, 
is a string, Linea Margaritarum, string of pearls. So um, they tended to be fairly, um, fairly literal. Uh, let's see, let's go back to jewelry. Um, hmm, let's see, what do we got here? Well, they didn't have a large vocabulary, but what they did have is a like lot of said, uses, uses of the word could be, you know, depending, it could have three different definitions or five definitions. I'm depending surprised there could. is not. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a failure. Let's see. What else can we do for jewelry? Um, diamonds. Somebody asked about diamonds. Okay. So I don't know if... Uh, There we go. That's hmm. what's supposed to appear. So you can jump over to the um, the Wikipedia. <laughs> see, <laughs> or or, or Vichypedia, and it is in Latin. So uh, Adamas vel Adamans, and you can see that that is uh, here's Adamas impolitus, unpolished diamond. And so you can often find some of the uh, words that are in more modern uh, um, uh, terminology uh, in the Wikipedia, but the easy way to get there is to look it up in the Wikipedia first and then jump to the Latin form. If well, see, now you're in the Latin one, try jewelry in the here. Oh, no, it, it's never going to find jewelry in here. It won't? No, because it's, it's J-E-W... E L E R Y. Did I do that again? No. Jewel R Y. There. Double L's, I guess. <laughs> well, see, so it's not going to find it because that's English. Got it. Try ornamentum and see if, if it uses well, something, the word jewelry in it. Yeah, see? Oh, well, this is. Um, ornamentum yeah. music. They may be referring to ah okay. There's annulus pars ornamentum. Let's see here. Let's go to uh oh that's that cracks me up. Oh, oh right. ring. I have the uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. I was looking for ornamentum. Uh, ornamentum. Uh, oh, there is apparently no actual page for ornamentum, so we could we could add one, but no, thank you. But they do have it in different um, forms in music and um, uh, um, 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 rocks. Um, semi-precious stones um oh i'm sorry no that's shoes <laughs> excuse me what am i saying um mausoleum terrarius uh ordo ordo ornamentum catena premium legio oh the legion of honor okay um, okay, I guess they don't have a plain ornamentum, but they do man mention, um, you know, rings. Mm -hmm. And then Margarita, there we go. And there's our Margarita. Margarita est uh, calculi formus res dura intra Carmen Molum Molusci. In other words, Margaret, uh, um, pearls are a um, calcium, mm -hmm. <laughs> hard calcium thing inside Carnum, the flesh of mollusks. Right. Yeah. Shellfish. Yeah. Well, yeah, in particular, uh, oyster. Well, actually, that's yeah, true. Oyster, yeah. not just oysters, but usually oysters. So anyway, so you can read all about them. Uh, or Maria Regina Scotorum. 
Mary, Queen of Scots. Uh, Marguerite, uh, what is this? This is, oh, but it doesn't have, whoop. It doesn't have a link though. Postulosa, oh, interesting. Go to the one on the end. Album, uh, Marguerite. Oh, oh, white pearls, yeah, okay. Well, that's the album is just white. Oh, okay. See album um, albus est color qui ot absentia ulius colores vel omnibus lucis coloribus. Basically, they're saying white is the color which is absent of other colors right. or um, other colored lights, etc. Right. So, yeah, I got it. That, yeah, so I was able to figure that out. Yeah. Well, that's wrong. Isn't white all of the colors? No, no, it's absent of colors. Yeah, well, that would make sense because you can't you, you can't white. How, how are you going to bend white? You can bend the color red or get the green, you know, or the yeah. blue and red shift. I mean, you know, that's how you guys figure out the stars going. To the white, white sunlight, to use a prism, you break the colors out of it. Yes, but white is not a color. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it, it's a. Um, um, well, okay. The okay. The other one, vel omnibus lucis coloribus comixtus, or it is the combination of all the other colors. I didn't read that that part. See, they're saying it's the absent of other colors, right? Or you can define it as a mixture of all the other colors. Definiere potest. It can be defined as. Omnibus, all the other colored lights mixed together. Comixtus. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, And I guess black could be defined the same way. It's either the absence of color or all of the colors. Let's see what they say. Uh, let's see. It's kind of a Schrodinger's cat issue. It is. Black and white. Uh, uh okay whoops do they have oh all right maybe we just need whoop. oh darn it they do, do 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 oh interesting uh oh never mind all right well, i guess i'll just have to type it in there we go uh yeah oh okay yeah. there we go yeah. there we go black is an obscured color which light um it's absorbed uh, is, yeah it is uh, yeah where uh, where all the lights are absorbed right okay well, actually, it looks decent, meaning there is no light, or all of the light is absorbed. Meaning, if it's if it's black outside, it's because there is no light, which is mm -hmm. not right. I mean, there is, but not to the naked eye, anyway. So, so look at that. You got your alley there, Fernan. Pardon? Fernan Nigram. Oh yes. You know what that is. The black eye. Uh, it's a black hole. It's my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> it is a black hole. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear about there's some city councilman somewhere that got really upset? Yes. I'm like, people are so stupid. Yes. Anyway. Uh, and actually, I thought it was a woman. But anyway, yeah, I read about that. And they tried to convince her that, no, it wasn't a swear word. <laughs> It's not racist. It's simply where yeah, all the yeah, money's yeah, going. No, no, no. It was. It, it. It's a thing in astronomy, and so yeah, you can. Um, so anyway, yeah, I can read about black holes. There we go. There you go. I just had a flashback. I had to help my daughter with a science project one time, and we were trying to do, to figure out if uh, different color uh, settings would affect the rate of ice melting in the sunshine. And so we got different pieces of colored paper and, and stuff. We said, but we had to have specific size ice cubes. It had to be the same. So we measured out like a couple tablespoons of water into an ice cube tray and froze them. The problem was my husband kept coming home and taking the ice for his tea. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> and so we had to write that up as part of the science experiment. We had a problem getting the test subjects in place because my husband kept eating them. <laughs> and the teacher said that is part of the process. She, she thought it was amusing, but she was quite pleased that we included that as part of the science project description. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, uh, Google uh, Translate did a pretty good job on this one. On the other hand, this isn't really tricky stuff. Um, what makes Latin trickier is when it's a little more, um, what's the word I want? Not abstract, um, poetical. That's not quite the right word. Um, and there are a lot of words for it to work with, too, to try yeah, to figure um, out what's being said. Oh, what's the word I, I want? Um, not illust, not illustrative, um, poetical. Shoot, I can't think of the name. Oh well, anyway. All right, enough. We are way past our over our uh, time here, and um, um, what we'll do is uh, next class we'll talk about all the great things that we learned about, including black holes in Latin. Yeah, there you go. Uh, make them all uh, jealous. Well, how was last last? I missed last class. Was it? Did you just did uh, Saint Michael? Yeah, we we did. Uh, yeah, we did the end of um, chapter eight. And I apologize in that. Uh, let's see which one of these. Oh, there it is. Um. Uh. Let's see here. Let me let me go back here. Hold on, hold on a second, Michael. I I need to. Mm -hmm. Back in. where I wanted to go here. Yeah, um, I've been trying to get the uh, the videos up and something weird is going on in that it won't allow me to do the videos. Hmm. So yeah, we just did this last section, section three. Okay. Uh, I'll so this was a repeat again. class of last week then. Yeah, I'll try yeah, again. I'm just worried about missing something, that's all. Yeah, it was, it was section three, so. Okay. Uh, you you shouldn't be too bad uh, too badly off that way. Just re yeah, read through it, uh, listen to it. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to talk to uh, the office at Annunciation to see if there's something that got broken. Uh, it's possible they updated. Yeah, I, I suspect they pay a small fee to YouTube that allows them to do content creative and a couple of other things and allows them to put the masses up there. So you're using you're using their website. I'm using their account. Yeah. Or their account. Yeah. Maybe okay. I now I should be like an authorized user. You should. So I'm not sure what's going on. I just have not had time. Uh, maybe they have a cap these. on how much information they can take in a in a week. Uh, I don't maybe. think that's the problem because they keep adding more masses. So um, no, I think it's I think somehow I got disconnected from their account. Hmm. And I need to get reconnected. Part of the problem is, of course, is they're in the office from about uh, nine to four. And of course I work eight to five, so it doesn't seem to be a good time. I just need to break down and send them an email, which mm -hmm. I'll try and do Monday. Cool, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna do it Friday because when they send emails on Friday, they go into the cosmic bit bucket. Uh, <laughs> that that uh, forum. The black hole. Yeah. That black hole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one, yep. You saw a picture of it. Anyway, for next time, I did want to mention uh, we will do chapter nine. Yeah. We'll try and work through the exercises. But chapter nine, if we look at the Latine Disco, we're going to see the third declension ending. So there's yeah. uh, third declension is a little more complicated than first and second. Because uh, if you have the singular nominative form of a first or second declension noun, invariably, you know, the pattern is the same. I, I mean, uh, you, you know what the root is. And mm -hmm. with third declension, that's not quite the case because uh, the genitive form changes a bit. So what, what I mean by that is uh, let's take the word rex, R-E-X. In fact, I'll go over here. Let's do another slide here. Uh, if we look at rex, which is king. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. not wrong. <laughs> what king is kings, K-I-N-G-S, is not, uh, it is not 
um, come on, where is it? It, it is Regis, okay? It is not Rexus, <laughs> okay? Let me uh, strike through. There should be a nice strike through. There we go. It's not Rexus, but it's the Regis. So you'll see that the root changes. Uh, usually the root changing is pretty straightforward. I mean, you can usually figure it out, but you will have to pay attention to it. In uh, order to find the root, you have to look in the dictionary and it gives the genitive, yes. which is the root. For all, for all the other cases other than the nominative singular. So yeah, if we have, um, uh, let's see, I don't think... Yeah, let's do Rex. There you go. So Rex, I don't know how well you can see that, but you see Rex and then right. the genitive mm -hmm. form is Regis. Right. So you would take the R-E-G. G and just drop the I-S. Right? And all yeah. the other endings. So, but it, again, it's not too bad. Okay. So, so we will get to, and the nice thing about that is you have pater, patris, mater, matris, um etc and so there's a whole yeah it's interesting when you take mater and put it in the third declension i'm sitting there went whoa what happened yeah oh well, that's what it was. yeah i know oh, okay so anyway uh so next time chapter nine you got it and uh let's uh do the oratio finalis because we are way over time yep. and, uh let's begin here in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum. Adveniat renium tuum. Fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie. Et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. And before we go, let me point out, pater is third. Uh, nomen is third. Uh, voluntas is third. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Panem is third. Debita is third. Debitorium. What about venium? Is it renium part of it too? Renium? Yeah. It's that's uh um since that's from Rex. Well, okay, but that's kingdom. And okay. Rex, that that is the, the nominative form for renium. Okay. Okay. So no, that that's a good second. Uh where was I? Debitoribus is second. Oh, sorry, third. Tentationum is uh third. And yeah, so anyway, so there's a lot of thirds that we've been kind of sneaking in there. And as I said, I've been a little hesitant to jump into prayers too much without having had the third declension uh, under our belts yet. So we're going to get um, we're going to get that in chapter nine uh, and whoops. And chapter 10 um, also has some of that uh, as well. So anyway, with that. We are done. Um, let's.